Hey everyone, Sean Watasa here back with another tutorial video. And in today's video, we're going to be building our very own AI NFT generator. And what we're going to be using is we're going to be using OpenAI with the Dolly 3 image generator, generate an AI image, and we'll then be able to mint that image as an NFT using ThirdWeb's engine. An overview of what we're going to be covering in this video, we'll first go over a demo of the AI NFT generator. So we'll generate some images, mint them as NFTs. NFTs. We'll then deploy our necessary contracts and set up everything we need for building out this application. Then we'll jump into our code editor to build out our AI NFT generator. So with all of that being said, let's jump on our computer here and take a look at a demo of our application. So right here, I have our demo. Uh, we just have a simple login button. I've configured this connect here with our embedded wallet. So it allows us to sign in with uh, social logins like Google or enter our email address. I'm gonna select Google here. We'll then select our email. And once we have signed in, you can see here we have our embedded wallet connected. Now our embedded wallet doesn't have any funds in this, but because we are using engine and a backend wallet that we have created with engine, the gas is actually going to be covered by the backend wallet. And we'll go more into detail on this throughout this tutorial, but essentially the connected wallet won't need any funds in it in order to mint the AI generated image and mint it as an NFT. So we have our little blank box here. We have our prompt section and we have our generate button. So in our image prompt here, we can just say a uh, cute turtle on the beach. We can hit generate. Uh, this is again using OpenAI's Dolly 3 uh, image generator to AI generate our image for us. So right over here, it's generating. So we'll give it some time. And once the image has been generated, it'll show us our image here. Now we can mint the NFT or we can regenerate, which will just bring us back to the previous section where we can put in another prompt. But if we do want to mint the NFT, we can hit mint NFT. And again, this is going to be using engine to mint our NFT. You can see here, NFT is minted. I'm gonna come really quickly to my engine dashboard. You can see our transaction has been queued up. It has been sent uh, and then we'll give it a few seconds and it should be mined. And once it's been mined, it means our NFT has been minted. And I can come to my NFT contract here. And if I go to NFTs and we scroll down to our most recent NFT, you can see here we have our little turtle generated image and we have minted it to our NFT collection and it is owned by our wallet or our embedded wallet that was signed into our application. And if we come back to our app here, you can see uh, NFT has been minted and we can go and generate another NFT, bring us back to where we can put in an image prompt, generate an image and then mint it as an NFT. So again, this is just a demo of what we're going to be building. Now we are going to be utilizing ThirdWeb's engine, which is going to allow us to one, have a backend wallet set, which is going to be the deployer wallet of our NFT contract. And because only the backend wallet will have the ability to mint NFTs to the NFT contract, we're using engine to handle all of that, secure our private keys and everything and execute those NFT mints. That is also why when we connect with an embedded wallet, we don't need any funds because our wallet will be handling all the transactions on the back end. So again, utilizing engine here and embedded wallets to create a seamless flow where a user doesn't feel like they need to interact or have to interact with any Web3 transactions, have to interact or pay any gas fees. Everything can seamlessly happen throughout our application and is handled on the back end side with ThirdWeb's engine. So now that we have seen a demo, let's start building out our application. Now we're gonna prepare everything that we need to build this application first. This requires us to deploy a NFT collection contract, and we have to create our own third web API key. So I'm gonna create our contract first. So we're gonna head on over to thirdweb.com, connect your wallet. Once you're connected, you'll be brought to your dashboard screen here and under contracts, we can deploy here. This will bring us to our contracts and we'll hit deploy a contract. And we'll be brought to our different contracts that you can deploy through third web. Now we are going to scroll down to this NFT section and we're going to look for a contract called NFT collection. Now NFT collection is an ERC 721 NFT contract, and it allows us to create these one of one NFTs. So we're going to deploy this contract. We're not going to mint any NFTs to the contract. Anytime someone generates an AI image and chooses to mint it as an NFT, only then will we mint the NFT to the contract. So I'm going to hit deploy now. 
we'll name this contract here, we'll name it AI NFT generator. Uh, we'll just call this here AI NFT for the symbol. Uh, you can drop in an image, add a description and everything if you want. Uh, at the very bottom here, we're gonna choose the network or chain we wanna deploy to. Now you can select any EVM compatible network on mainnet or testnet. You can just search it right here. Now for this tutorial, I'm gonna be using the Mumbai network. So I'm gonna select Mumbai and I'm gonna select deploy now. We'll get a transaction that comes up. Uh, we have to just pay for the gas to deploy the contract. So we'll hit confirm. We'll get another signature request here uh, asking us to sign. This will add it to our third web dashboard. And once that has been successfully deployed, you'll be brought to your contract dashboard here where we'll have the contract address, which is what we'll need for our application. So I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna save that on the side really quick. And you can see here uh, in the left hand navigation, we have NFTs. Uh, we don't have any NFTs. Uh, we're not gonna mint any. Again, we're going to use engine to call the mint to function. And that is gonna mint the NFT to our contract here. Now we do also need our third web API keys. So if we come to on the top navigation here and we come to settings, I'm just gonna open up a new tab. Here you can create your own API key. Uh, you can just hit create API key, give your API key a name. You can fill out the allow domains or just allow all domains. Uh, if you want a more detailed video uh, going over everything on API keys, we'll link that down in the description below. Uh, I already have one created for this project here. So that is what we're going to use. I'm just gonna copy the client ID. And you also, when you create an API key, you'll be given a secret key. You wanna make sure that you save that as well. So we have our contract, we have our API key set. Now let's build out our project. So in my terminal here, the first thing we're gonna do is create ourselves a new next project and we'll then install third web after that. So I'm gonna run npx uh, create next app and we're gonna call this uh, AI NFT. Uh, we'll just say yes. Will we like to use TypeScript? I'll say yes, ESLint, yes, Tailwind, no. We'll just do our own styling and source directory, yes, and app router, yes, and no to customizing the default. And once that's done, we'll change into our AI NFT and we'll open that up in our code editor. All right, and once opened up in our code editor, first thing we're gonna do is install third web to our project. So I'm gonna open up my terminal here. And we're gonna install third web React, third web SDK and ethers. We'll link down in the description below uh, the doc if you wanna know how to install third web into your existing project. Now, once that is done, we are also going to be using OpenAI using their Dolly image generator. So we'll have to install OpenAI as well. So I'm gonna do yarn add OpenAI or you can do npm install OpenAI as well. But we'll leave the links to OpenAI's docs on how to install that along with everything else down in the description below. And once that's done, we'll just drop our terminal down here for now. And we're gonna create a new folder here in our file directory. And we're gonna name this constants. And we're gonna create a file in that called constants.ts. And this is just going to hold our contract address constant. So we're just going to export our const here. We'll call this NFT contract address. And we'll get our contract address of the NFT collection contract that we just deployed. So let me grab that. And we'll save that. And this is just so we can use our NFT contract variable here throughout our application. Right. Next, I'm going to create a new file here called .env, and this is just going to be where we store our environment variables. And in our environment variables, we're going to be storing a few environment variables uh, for using engine. We're going to need our engine URL, our backend wallet address, and our access token. For third web, we'll need our third web secret key along with our client ID. And then we'll also need our OpenAI secret key as well. So for engine URL, we know that uh, we are going to be running a local instance of our engine, which is going to run on 3005. And I do have my backend wallet that I'm going to use, which is going to be the wallet that we deployed our NFT contract with. Uh, because again, that wallet is the only wallet that should be able to mint NFTs to that contract, uh, unless you configure the permissions on the contract to allow other wallet addresses. 
but we're going to put in that wallet address here and we do have our client ID for our third web, which is our third web client ID, which we'll put there. And we do have our secret key as well. So I'm going to get our third web secret key. Cool. And our access token and our open AI secret key, we'll get those later throughout this video. So next I'm going to head into my source folder here and I'm going to go to the page.tsx. And what we're going to do here is we're just going to delete all of that boilerplate code that we get. And we are going to create our homepage. So we're going to use client here and we're going to export default function home. And here we'll return our app. Now we're going to wrap our whole application with the third web provider. And we're going to import third web provider here. So we'll just come up here, import third web provider from at third web. Oop, if we spell third web provider, right? Third web provider. There we go. And in our third web provider, we need to provide it with two things. Uh, we need to provide it first with our active chain. And in this case, we are going to set it to Mumbai because that's the chain that we deployed our contract to. And we need to provide it with our client ID, which we have stored in our ENV, our .env file. So we're going to process .env dot the name of our variable, which was next public client ID. And this will be wrapping our application here. So we're going to call this our uh, claim page, uh, which we'll make in just a moment. Now in our application, we want to allow a user to sign in with social logins or emails. So in our third web provider, we're also going to provide supported wallets and we're going to give it an array of wallets we want to support. And we just want to support embedded wallets. And just like that, we now have the ability to just allow social logins or email logins to our application. So right before, right below our home here, I'm just going to create our claim page right here. And in here, we'll create our app uh, that will generate our image and mint our NFT. So the first thing we want to do here is add a way for us to connect our wallet or have a user sign in. So all we're going to do is add the connect wallet UI component from third web. And that right here will allow us to use any of our supported wallets. And in this case, it is going to allow us to use embedded wallet because that's the only supported wallet we have. So a user will just be able to sign in again with our Google or email to get a wallet generated for them. Now I'm going to give this div here uh, some styling. So I'm just going to give it style, display flex and center everything within our page here. So I'm going to open up my terminal once again and run yarn dev just to open this up. And there you go. We have our connect wallet button right here in the middle of our application. If we click on it, you can see we have our Google sign in or we can sign in with email. Uh, we can actually change the text of this button as well. So we'll come back to our code editor here, drop this down uh, for our connect wallet button. We can give it the property of button title and we can just have it say uh, sign in. And then we come back to our app here. You can see it says sign in right here. So we can just click on sign in. We can put in our email address. We can hit continue. We'll be sent a one time verification code. So we'll get that from our email. Once that's verified, it will sign us in and we'll be connected to an, a new embedded wallet that's generated for us. So now if we look back at our demo application here, we only want our image generation and everything to display when we have a wallet connected. So if it's disconnected here, we won't have anything. And when we are connected and when we are connected, it should show us our AI image generation prompts. So back here, uh, we're going to create that next down here. We're first going to work on the AI image generation, and then we'll add the ability to mint it as an NFT. So back in our code editor here for our claim page, we first want to, again, only display things if we have a wallet is, uh, connected to our application. So we're going to create a variable here called address, and we're going to use the use address hook from third web. And this is going to let us know one, if a wallet is connected, but it'll also get us the wallet address of the connected wallet, which we'll then use as the address we want to send the NFT to when it is minted. 
Next, we're gonna create some state variables here, one for our image prompt. Uh, so in our input field, we're gonna uh, create a state variable for whatever prompt we put in there for our image so we know what to generate. Uh, we have our generated image. So once our image is generated, uh, we'll just store it in this state variable here for us to then mint. And then we'll set um, some states here for is image generated, is loading, is minting, and is minted. All of those will be set as false uh, for default, and we'll use that throughout creating our app. So below our connect wallet button here, this is where we want to only display things if we have a wallet connected. So if we have an address, we'll then be able to show our image generation tool. And what we're gonna check first is if their image is not generated, then we are going to show a blank uh, image. And if the image is generated, we wanna show the generated image. So again, if it's not generated, we're gonna create a div here. And in this div, we're just gonna have some text here. And depending on if the image is generated or is, and depending if the image is generating or not, we'll do come here and we'll say is loading. And if it is loading, it means that we're generating the image and we'll say generating. But if it is not generating, then we'll just have the text say enter a prompt below and click generate. Now we'll give this div some styling here. And we're just gonna give it a width of 512, height of 512, some border, uh, display, and we're just gonna align the text center within that div. Now, if the image is generated, we are going to use a third web UI component called Media, Media Renderer. And Media Renderer is going to be able to render out our image. So we just need to set the source, uh, which is gonna be our generated image. Uh, we'll give it some alternate text, which will be whatever we put as our image prompt. And we'll set the width to 512 and the height to 512 as well, same as the div we created above. And we'll give this a little bit styling. Uh, we'll give it a border radius and a margin on the top and bottom. So again, if a wallet is connected, we're first gonna check is the image generated because we don't have a Im generated image. We're just gonna show our default box saying, hey, enter a prompt below. And if it is generating, it'll change the text to generating. And once we have the image generated, we'll then display that image using our media renderer component here. So if we come back to our app, uh, we should have that blank box here saying our prompt saying enter a prompt below and click generate and this is where our image will generate uh, next we need to show the prompt and generate button our prompt input field and generate button down here so we're going to check here is uh, image generated again and if the image is not generated then we're going to show the input field and the button to generate so right over here we're going to create our input field. Now our input field is going to be text. I'm just gonna add some blank tags in here as well. So our input field here is going to be a text field. Placeholder is going to say, enter a prompt. The value is going to be our image prompt and we have on change here, which is going to change our and set our image prompt to whatever the value of our input field is. And we'll give it a little bit of styling with some width and some padding. Then below our input field, we're going to have our button. And this button, uh, depending on is loading, uh, it'll say generating or generate. So if it is generating, we'll display the generating text like we did above. And if it's not generating an image, we'll have it say generate. Now this button here is gonna have a on-click function that we are going to create, uh, but we'll set some styles here for this. Give it a width, some padding, and some margin. And we'll also say that this button is going to be disabled if it is loading. So coming back to our app here, we now have a input field where we can type in our prompt. And we then have a generate button that we'll create a function for to generate our image. 
So again, we're going to be using OpenAI and Dolly 3 to generate our image. So we're going to come to OpenAI's docs here. We'll link this down in the description below, but we are going to be doing image generation here. Now, if you don't have a account, you will have to set up an account. You will also have to have some funds in order to use OpenAI's image generators or any of their APIs. So you will have to do that as well. Uh, in the side navigation here, you can get your API keys. And you can see here, you can create a new API key. So we can create a new one here and we'll just say AI NFT YouTube video. We'll create it. We'll copy our secret key and come back to our code editor and in our .env file, we can paste that secret key right over here. So if we go into our documentations here, we go to quick start, you can see uh, we can set this up for a Node.js. And we already have set up and installed our OpenAI here. So now next thing we need to do is just create a API request um, using the image generation here. So we're gonna come back to our code editor here. I'm gonna open up a new, and in our files here in the app folder, I'm gonna create a new folder, which is gonna be an API folder. And in that API folder, I'm gonna create a new folder called generate. And in that generate folder, I'm going to create a new file called route.ts. And in here, we're going to create our API call to generate an image using Dolly 3. So we're going to create a new variable here called OpenAI. And this is going to equal a new OpenAI. And what we're going to do here is import OpenAI. So import OpenAI from OpenAI. And for OpenAI, uh, we just need to provide it with our API key. And our API key is going to be our process.env. And we're going to get the variable name, which is our OpenAI secret key. Then what we're going to do here is we're going to export an async function. And this is going to be our post function, which is going to take our request which is going to be of type uh, next request, uh, which we're gonna import as well from up there. And this is where we're going to create our API call to OpenAI. So in our request body, we're gonna provide it with the prompt. So we're gonna get the prompt from uh, our request uh, JSON here, and we'll store it in a prompt variable. And then if we'll just check if there is no prompt and if there is no prompt, we'll just return a response uh, with an error saying no prompt provided with the status of 400. Then we're going to get our response here and our response, we are going to await uh, OpenAI, and we are going to be generating an image and we are going to generate it. And now we need to provide this image generation with a few things. So if we take a look at the OpenAI docs here, we go to image generation and we scroll down. You can see we need to provide it with things like the model, the prompt, uh, N being the number of images we want to generate and then the size of the image. So coming back to our code editor here, we're going to specify the model. Uh, in this case, we are going to use Dolly three uh, we need to give it its prompt which is going to be our prompt that we're going to get from our request and being the number of images we're going to generate we're just going to generate one image per prompt and then the size now we can look at uh, the docs here there are different sizes that we can provide for these images so uh, 1024 by 1024 1024 by 1792 or 1792 by 1024 uh, we're just going to do square images, so we're just going to provide it with 1024 by 1024. Now, by default, these images will generate and it will generate an image with a URL. The only thing is that URL only lasts one hour. So instead, we can actually format the, the response. Uh, so response format and we can have a response as a B64 JSON. Then we'll use this to um, convert it to a file and upload that file to IPFS for our NFT. And then once uh, we get our response, uh, we can return a new response here, uh, which is going to be JSON 
dot stringify and we're going to return our data which is going to be our response data so that is going to be our API request to generate our image using uh, OpenAI's Dolly 3. Again, we're just taking in uh, our prompt, uh, whatever user inputs. Uh, we're going to generate one image, which is going to be a 1024 by 1024 image. And our response format is going to be this B64JSON. So coming back to our pages file here, we're going to create that function to generate our image. So I'm going to come up here and we're going to create the uh, handle generate function, uh, which is going to be our on click function. And we're going to first set is loading to true. Then we'll create a try catch here. Uh, in the catch, we'll just console log our error and set the loading to false. Uh, in our try here, what we're going to do is Submit our um, submit our request to generate our image. So we're going to get back a response here, and we are going to await and fetch our API slash generate. And here we're going to set the method, which is going to be a post. Uh, we're going to set our headers. Oops, and this is going to be content type, uh, which is going to be of application JSON. And we're going to set the body and we're going to set that to JSON stringify and we're going to set the prompt to the image prompt. Uh, that is what the user has in that input field. So once we get our request back, if our request is not OK, we're going to say it failed to generate the image. And if our request is OK, we're going to get uh, our returned response, which is going to be that BS64 JSON. So we're going to actually have to convert this into something we can display here. So we're going to get our data back. So we're going to await our response JSON. Then we're going to get the B64 JSON. Uh, and that is going to equal and we're going to set that equal to image data. And this is going to be an image or a PNG. And we'll get our data.data.b64json. Uh, that's where our data is going to be stored in our response. And then we are going to get back our object, which we are going to parse that b64json. And then we are going to get the, the image data from that. So we'll set the... Uh, Set the base64 image data to our object dot image data. So once we get that image data, we can then set the generated image to that image data. We'll set the image prompt back to an empty string. Uh, we'll set is loading to false, and then we'll set is image generated to true. So again, we're going to get back that image data, convert it into an image, set that as our image that we want to display, and set our prompt and everything back to normal. So if we come back to our app here, we should be able to enter a prompt. So we'll just say sunset at the beach. We'll hit generate. And oh, we did not set our uh, button here. So let me come back to our app. Let us set the button here. So we're going to give this an on click uh, and it's going to handle our generate. So we'll save that, come back to our app. And then, yeah, sunset on the beach. We'll hit generate. You can see it is generating here. And there you go. You can see we have our image pop up. Uh, once it is generated. Now, the next thing we need to do is add our buttons here. So in our example one here, let me just do another one here. I'm just gonna say cup of coffee. So this is our demo app from the beginning. So once an image generates, we have two buttons here, one to mint it as an NFT, and the second one will be to regenerate or basically just come back and generate a new image. So we want to create these two buttons here that will mint the NFT and we'll utilize ThirdWeb's engine to do that. And then we just have a button here to regenerate, which will just bring us back to this generation page. 
So over here, let's come back to our code editor. And we're gonna come up to this is generated. So if our image isn't generated, that's where we show our input field and our generate button. If the image is generated, this is where we want to um, one check. Uh, we're gonna say uh, is minted. Because if it is minted, we're going to not display the mint button. So again, if the NFT is minted, we're just going to display that our NFT has been minted. It'll be a text with some border and everything of the color green. But if it isn't minted, we're going to create a button and that button um, is going to say here, if it is minting, it's going to say minting. And if it's not minting, we'll have it say mint NFT. And that button here, we're going to give it some styling and it's going to be disabled if the NFT is minting. So we'll come back to our app here. You can see we have that mint button and we'll create the mint function for that in just a bit. And below that, we're going to have a regenerate button. So we're just going to have another button here and that button, uh, we're actually going to have it have two different things. Uh, we're going to check if the NFT is minted. Uh, if it is minted, we'll just say, uh, generate another um, and then if it is not minted we'll have it say uh regenerate so if they minted it if they minted the nft we'll just say generate another so they can mint another one uh, if not it'll say regenerate uh, button here we'll give it the same styling as the other button so we save that come back here uh, we have our two buttons uh, and then we can actually create the function or the on click for this button so this button uh, and this on click is going to set the is an image generated back to false, the generated image back to an empty string and set the is minted back to false. So if we come back to our app here, uh, if we click our regenerate, it just brings us back to our generation screen where we can enter another prompt and generate another image. So now that we're able to generate our image, let's create our ability to mint that as an NFT. And we're gonna be using ThirdWeb's engine to do this. Again, because we deployed an NFT collection, the only person or wallet that can mint NFTs to that uh, collection is going to be the deployer wallet. And what we wanna be able to do is anyone should be able to mint the NFT, get it sent to their wallet, but in order to do that, we're gonna to have to use our wallet that we deployed with. And Engine allows us to use these backend wallets so we can use that deployer wallet, set it up as a backend wallet. Uh, we can fund it with some uh, native token to pay for the gas. And that wallet will then execute these transactions on behalf of the user of the application, but send the NFT to their wallet address. So we're gonna to have to create this API call to our engine server, which we're going to set up for this tutorial locally on our device here. Uh, but coming back to our code editor, we're going to open up our file directory. And in the API folder, we're going to create a new folder called mint NFT. And in that mint NFT folder, we're going to create a new file called route.ts. And what we're going to do here is get our variables that we need uh, in order to use engine here. So we're going to get our engine URL. We're going to get our third web secret key, and we're going to get our backend wallet address. Uh, and this is all going to be from our ENV file. And we're going to create again, our post requests here. Now we're first going to check to make sure we have all of our environment variables that we need to use engine. So we're gonna make sure that we have our engine URL, our third web secret key and our backend wallet. If we do not, uh, we will throw a new error saying missing the environment variables. What we're gonna be getting from our request body here is going to be the user image and the address that we are going to be sending the NFT to. And this is going to await our request JSON. Then we are going to get our response here and this is going to equal our await. And we are going to fetch. And what we're gonna do is get the URL that we need to get this response from. Now, 
Right over here, I'm on the engine dashboard. Now we're gonna set up a new engine locally and walk you through the steps. Um, but to show you here uh, in Explorer, we're going to be interacting with an ERC721 contract and we're gonna be calling the mint2 function. So that's this one right here. And you can see here that this is gonna be contract slash chain slash contract address ERC721 mint2. And these are gonna be the parameters that we need to provide along with the request body. Um, you can see here, we're gonna to have to provide it with the receiver and the metadata of the NFT that we are going to be minting. So we're gonna take this, um, so we're gonna use this here uh, and we're gonna come back to our code editor. So what we're going to have to do is get is fetch our response here from and we'll import NFT contract address. So it's gonna take our engine URL contract. Uh, I set the chain to Mumbai just cause that is the chain that I deployed my contract to. You'll make sure to set that to the chain that you deployed to. We'll then um, get the NFT contract address that we stored in our constants file. And then again, we're specifying ERC721 and we're gonna be calling the mint2 function. Uh, next, we're going to set the method here to post and we have our headers here. Uh, content type is going to be application JSON. We're going to set authorization here to bearer and then our third web secret key. And then we are going to have our X backend wallet, which is going to be the backend wallet address. Again, these are going to be the environment variables that we stored in our .env file. Then in our body, we're gonna json.stringify and we're gonna provide it with the body. So if we come back to our explorer here, again, we have to provide it with the receiver and the metadata of the NFT. So we're gonna set the receiver. And the receiver is going to be the address. Um, and that address, again, is going to be the address of the connected wallet to our application. Then we are going to set the metadata here. And we're just going to name. So you can take in these prompts here, too, if you want. We're just going to name this AI NFT. Uh, and then we're going to set the, the description here to an NFT generated by AI. But again, you can take in user inputs for these if you want to. And we're gonna set the image here, oops, to the user image. Now, once we get our response back, we'll check if response is okay. Then what we'll do is we'll just console log uh, minted NFT and we'll give our, and then we'll await our response.json else will console log nft failed and we'll get to the json.txt then we are going to return our next response dot json and this is going to have our message saying that our um, we have successfully minted nft so again, this is going to be our call to engine here. We're just going to call the mint2 function, mint it to the address of our connected wallet to our application, and then set the metadata of the minted NFT. Uh, the main thing is that we're setting the image to the image that was generated. So now coming back to our page.tsx, we're going to create the function to mint that, that onclick function to mint our NFT. So we're going to create a mint, mint NFT function here. And we're going to set is minting to true first. We'll then run a try catch. And in the catch, we are going to console error, our error. And in our try, we're first going to set our image to a file that we can upload to IPFS. And then we'll submit that IPFS hash as our image for our NFT that, um, that gets minted into the metadata. So we're first going to get our fetch response and that is going to await. And we are going to fetch our image. So in our so that means in our function here, we're going to have to take our image data. 
I will just set this to any here. And in our try, we're going to create a uh, fetch response. And that is going to await, and we are going to fetch our image data. We're then going to create a blob here, which is going to be uh, await. Oh, spelled data wrong here. Uh, then we're going to create a blob and await our fetch response dot blob. So we're going to then create our file, which is going to be a new file, which is going to take our blob, um, name it image.png of type image png. Then we are going to get the image URI, uh, which means what we're going to do here is we're going to upload this image to IPFS. So what we're going to do up here at the top is under our address, we're going to get our SDK and we can use use SDK from third web to then get our SDK and with SDK. So we can await, we can say SDK dot storage dot upload. We can now upload our file to IPFS and in return, we'll get an IPFS hash or URI that we can use as the metadata to our NFT. Now we can say if we don't get our image URI, we can just say we failed to upload the image. We'll then get our response from our engine here. So we'll await fetch. We'll do slash API slash mint NFT. And again, we're going to use our method, which is going to be post. We'll set our headers here, which is going to be content type uh, application JSON. Then we have our body, uh, which will JSON dot stringify. And we have to provide the, and we're going to have to provide those two things, which here was our user image and address. So we can say user image, which is going to be our image URI. And then our address here, which is going to be address. And then if our response is okay, we'll just alert that our NFT was minted. Else we can just get our error and alert that there is an error minting the NFT. And then after this catch here, we can say, finally, we'll set is minting to false and set is minted to true. So again, just to go quickly go over this, we're creating an on click function that takes our image data, turns it into a file that we upload to IPFS. We then call our function from engine here, providing it with the IPFS or image URI of our NFT, the address we're sending the NFT to. And that is going to, again, in here, use engine and we're going to mint that NFT to our contract. And then all we need to do here is in our button to mint the NFT, where is it? Right over here, we are going to set the on click of this button to mint NFT and provide it with our generated image. So we can come back to our app here. If we generate an image, we can just say cartoon dragon, we'll generate that. We now have our image here and we can mint our NFT. Now, I'm not going to mint it just yet. We're going to go through how to set up a local instance of engine. That way you can test this out yourself. Uh, if you do also want to follow along, we do have a video down in the description. We'll link it down there to a in detail step by step on how to set up engine locally on your device. So I'm actually going to bring up my Docker here and I'm going to kill my instance of engine that I have up and running right now. Okay, so I killed my instance of engine. You can see here in my engine dashboard, I'm not connected to anything um, and we are not running anything. Um, I cleared all the containers and everything in Docker here. So now what we're gonna follow, so we're gonna follow here is the engine docs and getting started. We'll link this down in the description as well. Requirements is that you have a Docker installed and you have a third web secret key. So we already have a third web secret key from earlier. You just need to make sure you have Docker installed. First thing we're going to do is run post. First thing we're going to do is run Postgres locally. So we're going to copy this command here, head back to our terminal. Let me just clear this here. Oops. Paste in that command, run it. 
there you go. We now have Postgres running. So if we look at Docker here, you can see we have our Postgres up and running. Uh, next thing, if we head back to our docs is we're going to run engine locally. You can copy this command here. You'll just need to fill in your third web secret key here, the admin wallet address. So this is going to be the wallet address that is signed into third web when you go to your engine dashboard. Uh, so I have this here with all the correct variables input it. I'm going to come back to my terminal here, paste that in and run that. And what we're waiting for here is if we take a look at our docs, uh, we're waiting till we see the server is running and we can see that the server is listening to our 3005. So there you go. You'll see that server is listening to 3005. Uh, that's how we know our engine is up and running. So coming back here, we'll follow the docs again. We're going to navigate to localhost 3005 slash JSON. Uh, you may have a prompt saying that this is an insecure page. You can just allow it. Uh, you should see this right over here. And then we're going to come back to our engine dashboard. And in our engine dashboard, uh, you're going to have to edit the engine URL. Uh, make sure that it is set to localhost 3005. And you'll see something similar to this where you'll be able to manage your backend wallet, see your transactions, uh, go to the Explore tab, try some of this out. Now, over here in the uh, overview, the backend wallets, we're going to get and import our wallet that we deployed our contract with. Now you can also just create a wallet and then set that wallet to have permissions on the contract. Either way works. The wallet that our backend wallet that we're using just has to have permission to mint NFTs to the um, NFT collection contract that we deployed. So I'm going to get the uh, private key to my wallet. I'm going to hit import and import it. So I grab my private key. I'm going to hit import, put it in here and then hit import. And you can see once it's imported, I have my wallet ending in B8 B2, which is the same wallet I have up here. You can see my balance. I have some Matic, uh, which we will need some Matic in the, the backend wallet. So if you do create a new backend wallet and set that uh, wallet to have permission to mint NFTs to the contract, you'll have to make sure that wallet is funded since that wallet will be taking care of the gas used to mint that NFT. So now that we have our back end wallet set, we can now test out our application and mint our NFT here. So I'm going to set up our screen here so we can just just so we can look at everything happening live here. So we have our uh, terminal running our engine down here so we can look for when it receives the request to mint the NFT. Uh, we have our contract here on the right. So once our NFT is minted, our NFT should show up here. And then on the left here, we have our uh, engine dashboard. So we'll be able to see the transaction appear here. And we're going to come back to our app. So we'll come back to our app. We'll actually sign out. We'll do this flow all the way from the beginning. So we have our sign in button. We'll hit sign in. We'll put in our email address. We'll hit continue. User can then verify it. Once they have verified their email, again, this is embedded wallets. A wallet will be generated for them. They now can generate an image. So we'll just say pineapple on the beach. Generate. You can see here our image will be generating. Once that image is generated, again, the user can then mint the NFT or regenerate a new image. So we'll hit mint NFT. You can see we have minting here. And once there, you can see down here in our terminal, we got the request. You can see it is minting. NFT has been minted. So if we come back to our dashboard here, you can see our engine dashboard. We have our transaction queued up. It is sent. Uh, we'll wait for it to be mined. Once it has been mined, we'll give our contract here a moment and we should see our NFT appear here with the image of the AI generated image. So we'll give that a moment. We'll refresh it here just to see if it needs a little refresh. And there you go. We have our NFT and you can see it is of the pineapple on the beach. And that is the image that we generated right over here in our application. And then back in our app here, you can see the NFT has been minted. We can generate another one, come back, 
generate another image with AI and then add it to our NFT collection. So there you have it. We built our very own AI NFT minter. We utilize the AI generation power of OpenAI and their Dolly image generator. We also used ThirdWeb's engine to be able to mint those NFTs. And we use that to create a very seamless flow where a user never has to interact or sign any transactions, pay for gas, or interact with any Web3 features. And on the back end, Engine takes care of everything from nonce management and retrying transactions. And this way, you know, for a user, their transaction will always go through. But again, I hope you folks enjoyed this video. You found some value in it. If you did, give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you don't miss out on tutorials just like this. If you need any help or support, we'll drop a link down in the description where you can open up a support ticket and our support team will be happy to help you out with any of those questions. But again, I hope you folks enjoyed this video. You found some value in it. And until next time, see ya.